What's up everyone, it's Steph and today I'm going to compare Vue vs Svelte. I've been a loyal Vue developer for about two years now, but Svelte has really piqued my interest as I'm sure it's piqued yours, that's probably why you're here. So I thought it'd be a cool idea to create a project that covers all of the basics. I'm going to go over creating reactive data sources and computed properties, calling methods, I'll make a component with data being passed in and values being emitted with two-way binding, just anything you can think of I'm going to try to cover in this video. And along the way, I'm going to compare it to how you would write the same thing using Vue. So that way we can see where all the similarities are, where the differences are, and overall how easy or hard it will be to learn Svelte as a Vue developer. By the end of this video, I hope we have a great idea of not only if it's easy to learn, but if it's worth learning. So let's get started. So here is a demo of what we're going to build in this video. It starts off on a welcome page. We click this button and it brings us to our game hub. As you can see, there are three sections. We have a pull section, a trivia section, and a riddle. I'm only going to be covering building out this pull section and riddle section. Um, by the time I built this trivia part, I already covered all the basics needed to create it. So for time's sake, I just cut that out. But I will be posting this on GitHub. So if you want to clone the repo or just look at it, I will link that in the description below. So we'll start off with this pull section. When you click buttons, it votes for that framework and it displays it in the UI, which one's winning. And then down here we have a riddle section. This is where we create a component and we pass in data from the parent to the child with this title. We communicate button clicks from child to parent with this button and we have a two-way binding with the input. So you'll type in an answer, click submit, and it tells you if you get it correct or not and it also shows you what you answered and what the correct answer was. And then even though we're not building this out, I'll show you what it is. You just have a question, you give it an answer, and then at the end it will tell you how many you get correct. All right, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is create a new Svelte project, and the easiest way to do this is using a template. So I'm at the Svelte template GitHub page, which I will link in my description below. And there are a few different ways we can get this template. The first is clicking this green button, which will create a repo for you. The second is cloning it using git clone. And the third is using Digit, which is the way I'm going to use today. I already have Digit installed, but if you don't have it installed, you're going to have to install that globally. You can do this by running npm i digit dash g and then once you have that installed you can just copy this command and paste it in your terminal this will clone the project for us we can then move into our directory and we have to run npm i to install all the dependencies and then we can say npm run dev to run this locally so let's copy and paste our local host into our browser and you can see we have this felt template that we can now build off of. So next, while we have our terminal open, let's install our Svelte routing. I'm going to link this in the description below, but I'm just gonna open a new tab and go to the GitHub for Svelte routing and scroll down to this npm install command, which I will paste in a new tab of my terminal. Now that we've created a new project and have our routing installed, let's open this up in the text editor. So here you can see that our project is structured very similar to a Vue project. We have our SRC with our app.svelte and our main.js. In our main.js, we have these props that are being imported to app and we don't need those, so let's delete them for right now. Let's move back into our app.svelte file and look at our script. You can see we define a variable name and we have export in front of it. I'll talk about when we would use this in the future, but for now we can remove it and let's say name equals svelte. Down in our HTML, you can see this variable is already being used and it's very similar to Vue, but it's single braces instead of double curly braces. Now, if we go back to our page and refresh, you can see that Svelte is being displayed on the page still. If I were to change the value of name to test and refresh, you can see that it updates to test. Svelte requires no boilerplate, so it feels very similar to vanilla JavaScript. Any variable you define in your script is automatically available for use in your HTML, which is really convenient. Now let's get our routing set up. So I'm going to head back to the GitHub docs for Svelte routing and where we have our usage example, I'm going to copy this first line of imports and just paste that at the top of our script. Next, I'm going to create a new folder within our SRC called pages and this will have two files in it. The first will be welcome.svelte and for right now, I'm just going to say welcome in here. And the second is going to be our gamehub.svelte. And once again, I'll just say gamehub for right now. Back in our app.view, let's import these two files right below where we imported our routing. And then let's look back into our documentation where we have this export let URL equal an empty string. And we're going to paste that right below our imports. 
Now let's copy this entire router section and I'm gonna paste this into the HTML and fix my tabs. We're gonna replace home with welcome. This will be our root page. And then let's change about to game slash hub. And I'll update the text also to game hub. And then we don't have a blog, let's delete that. Down here, I'm gonna delete all of the blog stuff and change about to game slash hub and update this component to game hub and this one to welcome. Now let's go back to our local host and look at our project in the browser. You can see we have this nav bar with welcome and game hub. Right now the text displayed is welcome and if I click game hub, it updates the text to game hub and you can see the route changes. So our routing is working as we would expect. Now that we have the project created with routing set up, I'm gonna delete all of this template styling and HTML so that we can just start from scratch. Now I don't actually want this nav bar in my app.svelte, so I'm gonna comment it out. And then I'm pretty much gonna do what we just did here in my welcome file. So let's copy that first import we have all the way at the top of this file and we'll move into our welcome.svelte file. Let's delete this welcome text and add a script tag and then we can paste the import within it. Back in our app.svelte file, let's copy this entire HTML section and we'll paste it in our welcome page. And we're using GameHub, so we have to import that up here as well. We can get rid of this commented out code and we only need a link to the GameHub page, so I'm going to delete this welcome link and finally paste in that line of code defining URL as an empty string. Now our routing is complete. We have this game hub button. When we click it, it goes to our game hub page and you can see our route is changing to game dash hub. So now we can build out the UI for this and I'm gonna start by moving into index.html and I'm gonna paste in the Tailwind link so that we can use Tailwind as our CSS framework throughout our project. Back in our welcome page, I've already added some really basic UI. So it just says welcome and I styled that router link to look like a button. No functionality was added or changed. That button still goes to GameHub. So now we can start building our GameHub page. In GameHub.svelte, I'm gonna start by adding our script tags as well as our main tags. And then within main, I'm gonna add a couple of divs. Now let's add some Tailwind classes for really basic UI. I'm gonna add some padding to our outer container and then a light gray background and shadow to create a card. Within this card we just created, I'm gonna add a P tag with bolded font. And in this tag, I wanna display our first variable, which is gonna be questions. So we use single curly braces with question within. Question obviously is not defined yet, so it's going to throw an error in our console. Up in our script, let's define question. To do this, we just have to say let question equal and then whatever we want the value to be. I'm going to add what is the best JavaScript framework for our question. And you can see our browser updates with our question displayed within our cart. Now we define question super similar to how you would define a variable with vanilla JavaScript. There's no boilerplate necessary and anything you define in your script tag is automatically ready for use in your HTML. Next, we're gonna wanna iterate through a list. So I'm gonna get that HTML set up. I'll add a few P tags and they're gonna display the name and the number of votes of the framework. So I'll say framework.name and then framework.votes. Then we have to go up to our script and add this array to our data. So once again, we can just define frameworks the way we would in vanilla JavaScript. It's gonna be an array of dictionaries. So I'll have four dictionaries, each with a name and a votes key. I will add view, react, angular, and then other, and all of them are gonna start with zero votes. Back down our HTML, we can iterate through this array using an each block. So we'll do single curly braces with a pound and each, and then the array we wanna loop through and the alias we're gonna use. So I'm gonna use framework. And then at the end, we have to close our each block with a backslash each. And you can see it is displaying each item in our list. So you can see similar to view, Svelte makes it really simple to render lists. Let's pull up the exact same code written in view and we can compare the two. So we have the view code on the right and the Svelte code is still on the left. And the first thing we notice is that Svelte uses fewer lines of code. This is because Svelte does not require any boilerplate, whereas view does. So all of our data has to be defined within our data function, which returns an object with all of our data, and then we can use it throughout this file. Now let's compare how we render lists. So in our view file, we use a v4 directive, and then we define our alias in whatever array we're looping through. 
The only other difference is that view does not require any sort of end tag. If we look back at Svelte, we open up our each block, we define the array we're iterating through first and then our alias, which is different than view, and it requires an end tag to our each block. So let's ditch our view code and move back into our browser and create a computed property. We are displaying each of the votes associated with each item in this framework, but I want to show the percentage. So in order to find the percent, we first have to get the total number of votes between all of the frameworks. And we will do this using a reactive variable, which is marked using a dollar sign. So anytime Svelte has a variable marked with a dollar sign, it knows that the value of this variable is dependent on the value of another variable. So anytime that other variable's value changes, this will be recomputed. So we just put our dollar sign and then whatever we want to name it, I'm going to call it total votes and it will be dependent on our framework's value. We're going to reduce and then I'm just going to sum up all of the votes and that is what we're going to return. And one important thing I forgot to add is a colon after this dollar sign. Now in our HTML where we display our votes, we can turn this into a percentage by dividing by our total votes and multiplying by 100. And we should see our, ah, you can't divide by zero. <laughs> if I went up and just updated the number of votes in view to one, we're gonna see view is gonna have 100%, which is what we would expect. So let's fix this. Down here, we're gonna add a conditional statement. And I'm gonna say, if total votes is zero, then we'll just display zero. Otherwise, we will calculate the percentage. Let's pull our view code up on the right hand side once again, and we can compare these two reactive values. So with view, we have to add our reactive value within our computed object. And it may look like a method at first, but it does not act like a method. It does the exact same thing that we just said in Svelte. So the value of total values is going to be dependent on our framework. So anytime framework is updated or changes, total values will be recalculated and the component will be re-rendered. So really the only main difference between the two is that you have to define total values within your computed object with view, so using boilerplate, whereas Svelte just requires that dollar sign. Let's pull up our Svelte project again and we have our percentage working how we want it, but in order to update these values, we have to do it manually by updating the number of votes in our array. We want to be able to click a button and increase the number of votes by one for that specific framework. So in our HTML, let's start by adding a button and the text will just say vote. And when this button is clicked, we want to call a method. So we're going to say on colon click equals single curly braces and then the name of our method, which will be add vote. Now we need to define our add vote method up in our script. So I'm just going to say const add vote equals. And for right now, I'm just going to console log clicked. So now let's open our console and we'll see whenever you click a button, clicked is getting logged. So the method is being called successfully. Now in order to add one to the correct framework, we're going to have to pass in the framework name. So let's add that as a parameter to this method and let's log the name. Now there is a problem with what we just did, which is now we are invoking this method automatically. So in our console, you can see all four names of the frameworks are being displayed in our console, even though we didn't click the button. Now this is happening because we're using these parentheses, so it's automatically invoking this function, but there is a way to get around this. What I'm going to do instead is add an inline function and I'm going to paste this within it. So since this function is not automatically being invoked, add vote isn't going to be called unless we click the button. So let's test it and you can see as you click the button, it logs the name of that specific framework. So now let's change all of these votes back to zero. In our function, we're going to delete this console log and we're going to set frameworks equal to and we're going to map frameworks. If the framework name is the same as the name we're passing in as our parameter, we are going to add one to votes and then return that framework. Otherwise, we're going to return the unchanged framework. Now back in our product, we can test this out by clicking these buttons and you can see the percentages are changing as you vote for the framework. So it's working. And once again, we can pull up how we would write this code with view. So the first thing I want to point out is that this add vote method, even though we're passing in a parameter with view, it is not going to be invoked automatically. So we don't have to use that inline method like we did with Svelte. 
If we scroll down to where our advote method is defined in our view code, we have to define it within our method object. This is just some boilerplate, similar to how we did it with computed. The only other difference is that within our add vote method, in order to use our framework's data, we have to use the this keyword. Otherwise, it's done just the same. The last thing we need to do to finish this poll section is create our progress bar. So instead of displaying the number, I want to display the percentage of votes in a progress bar. And I'm gonna first move the title of the framework outside of that div, and I'm gonna add another one. This is gonna have a width full, and I'm gonna give it a set height of six. And then within that, I'm gonna create another div. This div will have a background color, but the width of this div is gonna be dependent on our computed value total votes. So for the syntax here, we need to do style equals, and then we'll do a single curly brace. Within that, our back tick quotation marks, and then we can say width, colon, and dollar sign, curly braces, and then we can write JavaScript within that set of curly braces. So I'm gonna copy and paste the statement down here within our curly braces, and now the width of this bar is going to be a visual representation of the percent of votes it has. So let's hit save and test it out. I'm gonna click around some of these buttons, and you can see our bar is changing as the percent of votes changes, so that's pretty cool. Now let's move on to the next section, which is gonna be our riddle section. So first I'll add another div and just copy and paste the same card styling I used for the card above. Then I'm gonna create a new component called a riddle card, which I'm gonna add here. And then up in my script, we need to import this. So import riddle card from, and I'm gonna create a new file called components and then store riddle card in that folder. So let's make the components folder and then our riddle card dot svelte file. And now we can just make sure that we register this correctly and you can see that our test text is being displayed, so everything was done right. Now I want this component to be reusable, so instead of hard coding our text in there, I wanna pass it in from the parent component, and we can do this using props. So I'm gonna add the prop question, and right now I'm just gonna pass a string in. I'll say this is a riddle. And then back in our riddle card component, we have to register this prop, and the way we can do that, first I'm going to add our script, and then we not only need to declare this variable, but we also have to allow it to be set outside of this component. So we can do that using export. So we'll say export let question. Now, if we add some HTML, we can display the question using single curly braces once again. And you can see the text that we are passing in from the parent component is now being displayed in our child component. Right now, we're just passing in a normal string as question. But if we wanted to set this question prop equal to some other variable defined in our parent component, we can do that as well. So I'm gonna delete the string and put single curly braces, and then I'll pass in a variable called riddle question, which we have to define up in our parent component script. So I'm gonna copy that and define it, and for right now, I'm just gonna set it equal to a string that says this is a riddle question. And now you can see that our text is being updated. So you can pass in any variable that is defined in the parent component in as a prop to the child component. Now I wanna update our riddle data. So instead of defining riddle question, let's define riddle. And this will be an object with a key question as well as answer. So let's go update that in our script. I'm gonna change riddle question to riddle and then add the two keys question, which will be our riddle question I'm gonna paste in and then answer, which will be our answer. Now back in our riddle card component, I wanna add an input, and this is gonna be where the user can answer the riddle. So let's add an input, and then we wanna bind the value of this input to our answer. So I'm gonna define answer up in our script, and it's gonna start off as just an empty string. Then we can bind the input to this value by saying bind colon value equals, and then whatever we wanna bind it to. In this case, it's our answer variable. So we will say answer. Now, if we wanna add a p tag and display answer in it, we can just see that as the input changes, so does answer. Now, if we click back to our parent component, we can see that we have our answer and we wanna compare the value of the input to that answer. So we need to access this in the parent component. Let's export answer so that we can have access to this outside of the child component. And we wanna do some two-way binding. So down in our riddle card component, I'm gonna say bind colon answer because that is the value we want bound. And then I will say riddle answer, which is what we're gonna bind it to in our parent component. So let's define this up in the script and it will start off as just an empty string. 
Now, riddle answer in our parent component and answer in our child component are bound. So no matter where it's changing, they're always going to be the same. But once again, I'm going to display riddle answer in the P tag, but it doesn't look like it's working because I spelled answer wrong. So let's add an S and test it again. And now you can see that answer in our child component and riddle answer in our parent are changing together. They are always going to be the same. If we head over to our riddle card component again, we want to add a button now. And when the user clicks this button, we want that button click to be communicated to our parent component so that we can compare their answer with the correct answer. So let's start off by just creating this button and the button text will just be submit. So this button is obviously inside of our child component, but when we click it, we eventually want to call a method that will be defined in our parent component. So we need to somehow communicate between the two components when this button is clicked. To do that, we need to do something called event forwarding. So we are going to forward the click event from this component to its parent component. And we can do that by registering the event, but not setting it equal to anything. So let's say on click, we're going to invoke the submit method, which I will create in a second. Up in our script, I'm going to say export let submit equal, and it will just be an empty function. So here we're exposing our submit function from our child component to our parent, which means we can pass in a submit property from our parent component that has the desired functionality. So in our parent component file, we can add a method that is going to be invoked whenever this button is triggered. So now this submit riddle answer is going to be invoked whenever the submit button is clicked. So in this method, let's say if riddle answer is the same as riddle dot answer, we're just going to console log true. Otherwise, let's log false and we can just test and make sure this method is being called correctly. I'm going to answer an incorrect answer first and then I will type in the correct answer. And if we go check the console, we can see that first false was logged and then true was logged, which means everything is working as we would expect. So now I'm going to replace our logs with a statement. I'm going to say if riddle answer is the same as riddle dot answer, then answered correct will be true. Otherwise, answered correct will be false. And then let's declare this answered correct value as undefined. So now we only want this input to be displayed if they have not answered the question yet. So we are going to use some conditional statements. We can create an if block saying curly braces, pound, if, and then whatever our statement is. So for us, it's going to be answered correct is undefined. And then we want to close that if block with a backslash if in curly braces. Now we can use an else statement within this with curly braces colon else. So now if answered correct is not undefined, it will display this HTML within our else block. Now I'm just going to add the HTML that they will see if they answer the question. And if they answer it correctly, so if answered correct is true, I'm going to display correct. Otherwise, I will display incorrect. I'll also display the correct answer and the answer that they provided. Now if we test this out, you can see that it shows it's an incorrect answer and it shows what we answered and what the correct answer would have been. Finally, let's compare how we would create the same component, this time using view. We have our view code on the right side of the screen. And the first thing I want to point out is how we access data being passed from the parent to the child. For this, in view, we use props. So here we have our question prop and our answer prop, which we can then use anywhere in our project. With Svelte, we had to expose these values to the parent using the export keyword. Now for our input, if you remember with Svelte, we use bind value and then the value we were binding. With view, you do something similar, but you have to emit the value of the input. Otherwise, you won't be able to access this value in the parent component. And similarly with our button click, we need to emit an event that we can use to trigger a method in our parent component. So now let's take a look at the files of our parent components. If we look at our riddle card component, you can see they actually look very similar. So the way you pass data into the component is not very different, just slightly different syntax. When it comes to binding the values with two way binding, instead of saying bind our value, we say V model. Otherwise, it's still very similar. Lastly, with view, to call a method or to emit a value, we say at whatever the value being emitted is, and then we can call the method the same way we would with Svelte. Now let's compare our conditional statements down in our HTML. 
So for svelte, we had to use an if block and we could add an else within that. For view, you just say v if and then v else and it does not require any end tags. One last thing I forgot to mention is that with svelte, we just import our component and then we can automatically use it in our file. With view, we import it and then we have to register it under components and then we can use it in our HTML. All right, so that concludes it. We went over all the basic building blocks necessary to create a simple web app such as this game hub. If you wanna take a look at the code for this or how I created this trivia section since I didn't cover that in the video, I'm gonna link the repo to this project in the description below so you can go look at it or clone it, whatever you want. But overall, I would say Svelte is really cool. It has a lot of similarities to Vue. It was really simple to pick up. I picked it up in a matter of hours, if even. And overall, I just really enjoyed the experience. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making this project. I think Svelte is such a cool framework that I'm definitely going to use in the future whenever I can. I could easily see this becoming the next big framework within a couple of years. So I think now is a great time to start learning it. I can also see the bigger frameworks like Vue and React starting to adopt some of these concepts. So I definitely think it's like the next big thing. If you give it a try, let me know how you like it in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.